Next animation I wanna share with you is the translation animation. And this is a very simple type of animation, but probably the most commonly used. Anytime we wanna move something from one location to another, the translation animation is gonna be the way to go. Now in this box example, I actually have a lock devised or uh, designed into this. And you can see that that lock is essentially made up of four screws. To keep things simple and from getting a little too cluttered, I'm going to disable or turn off all of those animations we've already created in the animation timeline. This means if we scrub the animation timeline, they will not actually take place. Now in this case, let's say that we want to move these screws out away from this lock. So in order to do this, I'm gonna grab the screw in the scene tree, right click, add animation, and choose translation. By default, the translation is set to one in the Y axis. Well, what unit is this set to? You might be wondering. If we check our scene information, we are using millimeters. This is defined by the 3D model. So when I made this model, I modeled it in Fusion 360 using millimeters as the main unit. If you wish to or need to change it, you can always change it by going edit set scene units and changing it to something else. Now in this case, millimeters is fine. If we were to play this back, we would see that it barely moves. That's because one millimeter is a small distance. Let's type in 10 and then scrub along the timeline to see what happens. You should notice our screw in the upper left-hand corner is moving up and down. Y is the up and down axis within Keyshot. How do we know that? Well, if we click in the real-time view and press Z or Z on your keyboard, you get the Y, X, and Z coordinate legend. So as we tumble around the real-time view, or at least tumble our camera around, we see the global origin or axes of the key shot environment. When we type in 10 in the Y axis, it goes up and down and you see it corresponds with the Y, the green arrow, and that's really useful. But we would know that we want to move this screw away from this face. And we have a few options. How they'll work will depend largely on how this was 3D modeled. But we can change from Y to Z because we can see Z is the arrow that's blue facing in the direction we want the screw to go. So let's take away the 10 from there and type it into the Z value. And as we scrub along, we should see that this screw now moves out of its position in the direction we want. Now what happens if we click on original local? Interestingly enough, nothing changes. What happens if we type in 10, oopsies, type in 10 for the Y, it also goes the same direction. When we had this screw inserted into this model, it just so happens that its local orientation aligned or matched with key shots global orientation or axes. So despite us changing from local to global and seeing no difference, that's why in this case. However, understand that in some cases, depending on how this object's oriented and how its local origin is oriented, that will change the direction it moves. So if you try pressing these two, uh, comparing these two options and you don't see a difference, it doesn't mean that the feature's broken or it doesn't work. It just means that in this scenario, the local axis or origin of this part is also coincidentally currently aligned with key shots, okay? Just to make that clear. Now that we have found that moving this in the Z direction is going to give us what we want, we are going to go ahead and copy it to these other parts. So the best way to do this, there's a couple ways we can do it. Right click and copy the animation. We can also then choose another screw, right click and go to add animation, go to add animation and paste animation or paste linked animation. And the two of these do very different things. We try a paste animation, we get a new animation added to a new screw. What's great is we can go ahead and offset this and now one of them moves out after the other. Kind of cool. If we delete this and we select that same screw and we choose to go to add animation, paste linked. Now you'll notice they move together but we don't get a separate bar in the animation timeline. That's because they're linked, just like a linked material. So if I change the value of one of them to say 15, they both move 15 now. So if you need them to move at different rates or different distances or different times, then you would do that by choosing to paste an animation and not link it. 
So now that I've got a linked animation, I could right click on it and unlink it. And there you go. Now they are separate animations that can be changed independently. The last thing I'm going to show you about pasting and linking animation and all that is that we could, if we wanted all these screws to move at once, we could actually animate just the level above that. So if I delete this animation and I choose not the individual screw, but the whole subassembly of screws, we could apply an animation translation. We could set Y to zero and Z to 15 like we just had. And we will notice that they all move together as one group. This is why it's important when we talked about our CAD prep, properly nesting, configuring our models within our scene tree. This is a good example as to why you might wanna do that because it's going to make it easier. Instead of having to do four individual animations or copy and paste an animation onto other objects, we can just go one level above and then animate that. And now each one of these screws could be treated differently with another type of animation, believe it or not. Now what's interesting is we've got one animation on the screws. If we copy it, the lock plate, this needs to be removed in order to open the box. So I wanna move this away as well. And what's cool is we can select that lock plate and paste that animation. And now we have two animations, believe it or not, because one is nested within the other, the set of screws is moving an additional 15 millimeters. Let me make sure that's clear. We have a 15 millimeter translation on just the screws alone. So if I turn off the animation on the lock plate, the screws move 15 millimeters. Now, if we enable the animation on the lock plate, which also moves 15 millimeters, because the screws are animated within that lock plate assembly, if we play this back, the lock plate moves 15 and the screws move an additional 15 for a total of 30 millimeters of movement. So this is where things get really cool and powerful and interesting because you can start to create really nice exploded views where you can nest animations to get a little bit more control over what you're trying to do. And it just makes things easier to manage, in my opinion. Last thing I'll mention about translation animations is you can also put a value in another axis. So if we typed in 10 here, now we would see that it would move in two different directions. The screws are moving up and out at the same time. Bit of a two for one there. We got into translation animations, but we also talked about copying, pasting, and linking animations.